Hello everybody, Michael is here and today I'm gonna download and install Git just so I have it on my computer ready to be used. So follow me here. I'm already at the download page and I actually have downloaded the installation program and I think I go... I went... my computer is 64 bit so I'm I went with this setup and I have it here on my computer so I'm gonna go ahead and run it. So let's go to the installation program and just go through it. So let's go with mainly the default installations here. You can see what I, I don't want to have it on the desktop. I want to in sort of set it up to integrate with Windows Explorer. I want to have those two menu items. It's actually so I can sort of start a bash tool in any way. Maybe I can show you that like that. So I could start a let's go down to some desktop and here. So I get these two, get git GUI here or git bash here. So those two things I, I, I want to have. So, uh, yep, let's go ahead. So that, and I can leave that for the, um, that can be like that. So let's go. So Vim default editor, Git's default editor. So you may do your choice here. I'm gonna stick with the Vim editor. I really don't care for now, but I, yeah, I really don't care for now. So I'm gonna stick with that. You can choose your own text editor there. Good. So here we go. Let's git decide whatever the, uh, the, the main branch should be. Okay, fine. I will not mess with that. I will also, I want to use, uh, I'm gonna stick with this recommended version so I can run git from the command line. So I'm gonna stick with that. I'm gonna use the bundled OpenSSH that comes with git. Yes, that looks fine. About the server certificates, I don't care about them. And I'm gonna check this. So check out the git repo as they are and commit as they are. I don't want to to have some magic in git that replaces the line endings in any way. So I'm gonna stick with that one. Uh, I'm not sure it's, if it's default, so you might want to select that also. Uh, so I wanna use the git bash and I wanna use it like that. I don't want to use the Windows default console. I want to have a bash tool for this. So I can stick with this, looks pretty much default, fine, I really don't care, too much information, just leave it as it is, really a lot of stuff to uh, go there. So uh, let's go ahead and just run the uh, installation program, and since, since the installation program will update the path, I uh, I will most likely need to sort of, uh, I don't want to uh, check the release notes for now, so I can just do it like this. Uh, so I will most likely need to um, restart my terminal so the path variable will be updated so I can access the git command. Oops, a lot of stuff there. I think we have a version for it. Very nice. So, ready to go with Git. Install it, installed and ready. And maybe I want to do some configuration. Let's see what we have. Okay, we have a lot of configuration. And this is, uh, most of it comes from the installation procedure and uh, setting well, stuff on how to Git should sort of work. But I, sometimes it will ask me for my sort of, um, it will ask me for my email address and name, and that is useful when I'm gonna later use it to make actual commits to my Git repo. So I'm gonna add that. So git config uh, user dot email I can have, and I'm gonna go with my own nice, 
really long email like that something okay fine um I cannot config. Let's see if I can config this as a global variable. Yes, that turned out better. So without using the global, I would sort of add the configuration to the current Git, uh, Git repo that I was in. And I wanted to have this as a global setting. So, and I also gonna set my name. So when I later, later on do these commits, it's gonna carry my nice name with it. Okay, fine. So let's see if we have git config and list all the items. Um, there we go. Excellent. So I think that is enough. We have installed git. We are now ready to get going with it. And thank you for that. And see you later. Bye bye.